It's Jason with Threefold Solutions talking to you today about a big update in Planning Center People. Workflows has undergone a major update and a little bit of a new layout change with some bells and whistles attached to that as well. I didn't want to wait to make a full update of all the new features that are coming out with Planning Center right now. This was too big. I had to make a workflow specific video so I could share with you the way that they've changed the enhancements that they've added, as well as some of the ways that you can now organize and even archive. That's right. You heard me right. You can now archive workflows. That's been a big one I've been waiting for. Let's jump into that video. But before we do, just like I always mention, at Threefold Solutions, we love making these videos. We do it to help people. And if you know others who can benefit from these workflow videos or any other video we've created, please share it and pass it on. If you like these videos, subscribe to our channel. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers. Help us get there. And that'll just show us that people actually do enjoy the content that we're putting out there. Let's jump right into the video and check out all these updates. Okay, let's not waste any time and let's jump right in here to workflows. You can see right here, I am looking at Planning Center People workflows. I've got a bunch here. I'm a big fan of workflows. Now, Today, I want to walk you through some of the obvious things and some of the not so obvious things. So first off, you heard me say it, we now have archived workflows. Huge deal. If you're somebody who's had to deal with old workflows and you weren't sure how to save them for the future, you just do something like ZZZ dash workflow name, and they would end up going to the bottom of your workflow list. And you might have a bunch like me, and you just didn't want them to show up out in the open. You might have created a category for them and you might have called it archive, but now you've got an actual archive, the workflow option in workflows. Now, the way that we actually find that, we've got to go back here and let's go to our active workflows. I'm just going to go over here to this connection card one right at the top. Now you've got some additional actions. One of those is edit title. It's kind of obvious, but that used to be a little bit different. Now it's here. You've also got the ability to duplicate. We talked about that before. Huge deal for multi-campus churches or where certain ministry areas share the same workflow. Now you can build it once and you can now duplicate it and utilize it across multiple areas and just make some minor tweaks. The other thing is here's where archive is at. When we archive this workflow, you're going to get a little pop up here that says, go ahead and archive the workflow. As soon as you do that, we're going to go back out to the front door here. You can now see that we have an archived workflow. It's got this little label on it here that shows us that. Now, if we want to unarchive that workflow, you're going to go right back up to the actions menu and click on unarchive the workflow. And here we are We're right back there. Now, a couple of the other things that you might notice here is what's the deal with this automation and settings tab. This looks a lot like lists and forms. Now they each have an automation and a settings tab. First off the settings tab. You're going to find your collaborators now under this tab. And if you need to add those collaborators, you've got to go here to do it. You won't see that in the actual steps area. It used to be located down here in the corner. It's no longer there. So now you're going to find that in its own tab called settings, just like on lists and just like on forms. The other thing is you've got campus designation here if you use multiple campuses and you've also got your category. So if you don't have multiple campuses, you might just be dealing with your categories here. Always use categories, helps you find these things and organize things. So that's where you're going to find a few new features and settings, but there's this automations tab. Now we get to see when an automation such as a form or a list is sending people into our workflow, you get to see where it's coming from. Where is that automation and originating from? Where are these people coming from? You can see all of those now inside of this automations tab. It's awesome. I love that. Great job, Planning Center. Okay, now when it comes to the steps and the cards that we actually add into our workflows, it's going to look a little different. And in this particular one, I'm going to go down and I'm going to go to my main workflows and I'm going to go to active workflows here. And I'm actually going to find one where maybe I have, let's do first time guests for just a second. I've got this first time guest one that's very similar to our connect card. But in this situation, I've got a step and I've got somebody defined here. It's our good friend, Luke Scott Walker. Wouldn't want to leave him out here, but we've got Luke's information here. I'm going to go ahead and click view card. And now I want you to notice there's a few things looking different today. Notice we've now got some drop downs right at the top. 
We've got this snooze option now, where it's a drop down. We've also got the ability to reassign that card to somebody else right here at the top. Those used to be buttons. They used to be in a different location. They're now right here at the top, along with this pin assignment. And if you've never used the pin assignment, the whole idea here is we may have different default assignees on each step, but sometimes you need to pin that assignment to yourself and you want to carry that card all the way through every step. By pinning it to yourself, it stays with you. That's what that means. Okay, as you're looking down here, though, some more changes start to show up. We've got two buttons here, a drop down menu and a complete step button down, down here now. And you've also got something amazing hiding here. In this more options button, you now find skip to a later step. That is huge. I have been waiting years for this. Now, I would love to see in the near future, the ability to bring somebody into the workflow on step three or step five or wherever. That's not quite there yet. They still have to come in the front door on the step number one, but we can now skip them straight down to step five. And when you click on this, you go find that other step and then you add them to that step and you move them straight to that other step. No more having to skip, skip, skip steps to get people to move down. You can now do it from here. The other thing that you want to take a look at here is just the option to remove the card from the workflow. So remove from workflow is here as well, including just the old skip this step, you know, just standard thing, as well as delete the card. So you can also just delete that card. So I wanted you to see that. But in addition to that, notice this new layout. It's completely different. And there's one more big deal waiting here, and it's under send email. Same with notes, looks very much the same. As soon as you click on send email, what is this? You now have this rich text opportunity with links. You can send an email directly from your workflow card, and it looks a lot like sending an email from a list in people. It's very standardized. We now get some of that same functionality, including utilizing one of these templates and you can build a new template. And now you can just go ahead and select the template and you can basically put that into your message that you're gonna send somebody. Obviously you're still gonna get, let's go ahead and just send this to Luke. You're gonna get that preview that you've always gotten, but now you're gonna be able to track that and have all of these nice little things included. So format those emails in rich text, make them look nice give people the opportunity to reply just like normal, but you just can dress them up a little bit more. You still have your same old perform actions, just like every other opportunity to run an action. You can, you know, use the action based on the permissions that you have, and you can go through those actions just like you normally would. Some of the ones I absolutely love is adding somebody in line to a workflow um, from this workflow into another workflow. The other one is, um, you know, there's so many, but you now have the ability to go down to services and add somebody to a team. Well, actually, you don't now have that ability. It's always been there, but it's some of my favorite things. These are the things that I think you need to know about because workflows are amazing and they just got a little bit more amazing with some of these new features. So that's all I wanted to share today. I wanted to give you a quick rundown on these new features in workflows. They still function much the same way. We just have different options in different places and a few extra bells and whistles like archiving our workflow, rich text emails, all kinds of things just popping up. Planning Center does not sit around. They are busy updating based on what they're hearing from their clients and their customers. And they're basically bringing that stuff up to the forefront. And we've got some amazing things happening. I'm super excited for what's yet to come. Just wanted to get you up to date on workflows with this video. I'm going to do a full roll up of all the new spring updates across all the apps in Planning Center. Be watching for that video, it's coming next. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next time.